Hello everyone and welcome to the week 5 of our course, Systems Integration in Architecture. By the time that you're watching this video, I hope that you are all safe and healthy. This lesson will focus on enterprise resource planning and business process models. So let's start our lesson. Enterprise resource planning, or we call it ERP software, is the backbone of most businesses allowing them to manage data across all departments. When we say backbone, we mean something that helps a thing or an organization in particular to become strong and successful. ERP aids in the administration of company-wide business operations and the usage of a shared database and management reporting tools. ERP covers different modules which are essential in the conduct of enterprise activities and operations. For this lesson, here are our objectives. At the end of the lesson, we must be able to identify the key role of ERP in business functions, understand how ERP works in the functional areas of operation and business processes, and define the functional areas of IS and enterprise system architecture. We will start by understanding what business process is all about. Business processes are a set of actions that take an input and turn it into a useful output for the client. When we conduct an operation or an activity, relevant and essential inputs are required from the client or other stakeholders to produce output. For example, in a grading system, we require input of grades from teachers to produce output which can be viewed by students. An ERP system's primary job is to assist business functions. With ERP, the conduct of business activities and operations becomes optimized, efficient, and productive. To comprehend ERP, one must first comprehend how a firm operates. It is important that we understand how enterprises operate in order to employ appropriate ERP modules to aid the operations of the business. On the left side of the screen, you will see there the different benefits of having an established business process, including simplified operations, greater brand protection, enhanced process consistency, superior quality, improved predictability, predictability rather, product safety, reduced risk, and lower cost. Categories of business processes include operational, and business process. The functional areas of business process includes marketing and sales, supply chain management, accounting and finance, human resources, and the like. On the other hand, business area includes specific activities to a functional area of operation. You see there, business processes includes the business steps, the stakeholders, and the goals of the enterprise or an organization. Now let's talk about ERP modules. There are different ERP vendors in the market. Some of the most popular vendors include SAP, Oracle, and Microsoft, which offer modules that support a company's major functional areas. The ERP software incorporates best business practices that use business rules to implement the organization's policies and procedures. Business rule defines specific instructions or constraints on how certain day-to-day -day activities should be performed. For example, business rules include a decision-making approval structure for invoice processing where only certain managers can sign off an invoice totaling a specific amount or Calculations in which a formula may be used to calculate revenues or expenses. Another example may be po policies where an organization requires employees to work with a preferred list of vendors. Looking at the figure, we see there different activities where ERP can perform including MRP or CRP, sales and marketing, master scheduling, shop floor control, 
accounts payable and receivable, logistics, purchasing, and bill of materials. Let's take a look on some of the comparison of ERP modules from vendors in different specific activities or operations in an enterprise. For sales, SAP has sales and distribution and sales opportunity modules. For Oracle or PeopleSoft, we have marketing and sales, supply chain management, while Microsoft Dynamics has retail POS, field service management. In terms of the procurement function, SAP has purchasing and supplier relationship management. Oracle, on the other hand, has procurement and supplier relationship management, while Microsoft has supply chain management. For production, SAP has MRP and production, or product rather, product life cycle management. For Oracle, it has manufacturing, likewise with Microsoft. In terms of accounting, SAP has financial accounting, same goes with Oracle and Microsoft Dynamics. For distribution function, SAP has warehouse management. Oracle has supply chain management, while Microsoft has distribution management. For the customer service function, the three vendors has a CRM modules. In terms of the corporate performance and governance, SAP has a governance, risk, and compliance management module. Oracle, on the other hand, has corporate performance management, while analytics is for Microsoft Dynamics. Lastly, for the human resources function, SAP and Oracle has human capital management, while Microsoft has HR management. You see there in the slides the different comparisons of ERP modules from different vendors considering different functions of an organization. So how ERP modules work? We have eight different functions wherein you can see how modules work when we integrate or when we utilize enterprise resource planning softwares. For marketing and sales function, functions includes advertising and marketing products, determining pricing, promoting products to customer, taking customer's order, helping create a sales forecast, customer support, and customer relationship management. These functions are included in the marketing and sales module of an enterprise resource planning system. In terms of the supply chain management, here are the functions. First, making the product or the manufacturing and production buying raw materials or we call it purchasing, receiving goods and raw materials, transportation and logics, scheduling production of products, and plant maintenance. All of these functions are included in the supply chain management module of an ERP. For the accounting and finance modules, here are the functions included. Recording raw data about transactions, including sales, raw materials purchases, payroll and receipt of cash from customers, planning and budgeting, and cost allocation and control. When we speak of the human resources module, here are the available functions included. Recruit train, evaluate, and compensate employees, benefits, and government compliance. HR uses data from other modules to plan personnel development plan or path. Systems integrated using ERP software provide the data sharing necessary between functional areas. As mentioned, these are the functions included 
for human resources module. In terms of production, it helps in planning and optimizing of the manufacturing capacity, parts, components, and material resources using historical production data and sales forecasting. These are the functions included for the production module in an ERP. In purchasing, it streamlines the procurement process of required raw materials and other supplies. For inventory management, ERP modules facilitates the processes of maintaining the appropriate level of stock in a warehouse. The last area includes the miscellaneous modules. Miscellaneous modules includes non-traditional modules such as business intelligence, self-service, project management, and e-commerce. Different e-commerce include business to customer or business to client, business to business, client to client, mobile commerce, and we also have social commerce. The components of enterprise system architecture includes the functional and system. When we speak of functional, defines the ERP modules that support the various business functions of an organization. Examples include accounting, human resources, procurement, and the like. On the other hand, the system component of the enterprise system architecture defines the ERP architecture through the physical components of hardware, software, and networking angle. The enterprise system architecture aids in the implementation or the implementation team rather in fully comprehending the enterprise system's feature and components. This helps to further understand and get to know more of the features and the components of an enterprise. The, ER, the enterprise system architecture also depicts the intricate system interfaces that exist between the ERP program and database in the operating systems legacy applications, and networking. If the needs for system infrastructure, training, change management, and business process re-engineering are very clear, management may design a stronger IT plan. It is important that organizations should be able to design and craft a strong IT plan in order to conduct and perform activities that are relevant and in line with the organizational goals and objectives. We have here the three-tier architecture. The three-tier architecture is consists of the web tier, the application tier, and the data tier. These three are used in the majority of modern ERP installations. So you have to remember this three-tier when we speak of ERP installations. For the web tier, web-based portal allows users the ability to access and analyze information through their web browsers. On the other hand, in the application tier, we mean the application tier consists of a web browser and reporting tool where business processes and end users interact with the system. In this tier, we allow the users, the end users, the client, or the customer to interact with the system. It shields the business users from the inner working of an ERP system, but it still provides the information relevant to their job and business processes. Lastly, the data tier focuses on structure of all organizational data and its relationship with both internal and external systems. So these are the three tier three tier architecture, the web, the application, and the data tier. So what are the benefits of the three tier architecture? First, scalability. When it is scalable, it is easier to add, change, and remove application. Next, reliability. 
implementing multiple levels of redundancy, and establishing a more relevant, optimized, and effective processes adds up to the reliability of the operation and the application in particular. Flexibility in partitioning is very simple. Maintainability, supports, and maintenance costs are less on one server. Reusability, it is easier to implement reusable components. So we, we have been talking about reusability over the past uh, lessons. So we have to really consider the, re the reusability when we implement systems or applications and we when we conduct integration and security of course it staff has more control system to provide higher security so here we have the benefits of three-tier architecture again we have scalability reliability flexibility maintainability reusability and security in summary in this lesson we identified the key role of ERP in business functions. We also learned how ERP works in the functional areas of operation and business processes. And we defined the functional areas of information systems and enterprise system architecture. That ends our week 5, focusing on enterprise resource planning systems and business models. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please take care and stay healthy. Goodbye.